to another video. We are picking up exactly where we just left off. In our last video, we created this sweet interface right here, which looks like a Facebook login screen. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, a very small topic, but something I think is important and often overlooked. And it'll be a brief video, but that topic is how do we change what we actually see here in our interface builder, this device? So this screen represents basically your iPhone screen, and this is an iPhone that has a notch. So that would be like the 10 or the 10s, uh, so on and so forth. Now, having a visual to design your screens uh, is important for two reasons. One, it just makes our lives easier. And two, the more realistic uh, and substantial reason is, uh, if you recall, I mentioned you can add constraints, which are rules as to how a element will be positioned on the screen relative to other things. So whether it's centered horizontally, it's 10 points away from the thing above it, so on and so forth. So how do we go and take a look at that here without running the app on every single device and wasting a ton of time? Down here in Interface Builder, whether it's a nib or a storyboard, uh, and if you're unfamiliar with the difference, uh, I encourage you to go back and watch our prior video on it. You're going to select this menu, and you can actually see we have all of our devices in here. So this includes iPads, uh, the older iPhones, iPhones with the notch, uh, the notch iPhone that's slightly bigger, and it even includes orientations. So if we actually, let's open this up again so it's higher up. If we actually click on, let's say, this older iPhone, we can see that this actually adjusts in real time and our positioning of the stuff uh, adjusted a little bit too. Now this iPhone isn't much different in size, so the adjustment isn't as uh, noticeable. But let's pick this huge iPad. Okay, if we notice our image is still centered, our fields have stretched way over here and here because we've said be 10 from the left and 10 from the right. Our button for forgot password is still down here, and we have this huge iPad. Now, the reason this is also important to do is maybe this isn't the best of layout choices for a div uh, an app that's meant to run on iPad and iPhone. We have all this white space here. Maybe this forgot password instead of being down here should be here. So we can apply different constraints and even maybe have different layouts for different devices. In theory, we want to use constraints to have kind of a universal application uh, and design it once and run it on different devices. So if we actually go down here and we pick a different device, let's pick this iPhone, we can over here change its orientation. So let's say we want to take a look at what our layout looks like on a horizontal screen. So if you notice, our icon is still centered. These guys are stretched. This is still at the bottom, and this is right below this field. But even though this particular layout works, imagine if we had more things vertically stacked. They would either be squished together and overlapping or off the screen. So it's important that you understand how to switch devices and orientations in your development environment, uh, in this case Interface Builder, to speed up your entire workflow. Uh, in my experience, while I have experience with landscape and portrait, uh, generally you'll be working in portrait. Um, the landscape isn't as, as important. However, uh, iPad layout and iPhone layout and something with a notch and without a notch are certainly important, and it really saves you a lot of time. So that's really all I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at how to actually run uh, these apps in these these different simulators, so like these different devices and also different orientations uh, in another video coming up. So after you've developed it and tested it and visually validated it here in this, this development interface builder environment, you can actually run it on a simulator um, or if you have a physical device that mirrors it to make sure it truly looks like what it's supposed to. So I think that's a wrap for this video right here. 
Uh, please leave a like below if you enjoyed it. Uh, leave comments, feedback. I really appreciate it. It helps me. It helps you. Subscribe for more content, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.